Yes, fire away. Oh, you're running out. Oh. Uh, can I leave one because one of my friends is coming? Is that okay? Yes, and my daughter's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, I live in Torres, but it's like a walk down Fairsway every day. Anyone who is not in the area should be at this meeting. Sorry. So nobody that uses the road? No, I don't think anyone who doesn't live in the area should be. So nobody that uses doesn't live in the area? No. Because the people who live in this area are the ones who have to deal with the cyclones. I'm sorry. I have to deal with the cars and the traffic. Yeah, and the cyclones cycle on the road as well. Um, the format is very straightforward. What we're going to do is have a presentation from, from the design team. And they're going to take you through some of the ideas that they're coming up with. And it's, it's these ideas that are starting to look for some feedback on. Following that, what we'll do is just have a short pause so that if anyone has come tonight just to have a look at what's going on and doesn't want to stay any longer, either for time or for other reasons, they can, they're very welcome to leave at that point. After that, what we'll do, we'll have about 30 to 40 minutes of question and answers on the phase two. Um, ideas and proposals that are coming up. If, if, if I can just finish this section, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. if we can get through the process. After, after phase two has been discussed in those questions, what we're going to do is the officers will be available for about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the session in their own time to talk about any general queries. So, we're here to discuss phase two. That's the purpose of tonight's event and the process. I just realized that's my next one, maybe. Well, I have to say is that we want to know about phase one. I don't, I can't have an answer for that because the purpose of tonight is to think about how we're going to move forward in phase two. Those in favour of phase one and phase two, we're not having Those a vote. Those in favour of phase one and phase two, we're not having a vote. None of it. 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 Oh my god, this is worse than I thought. Yes. I this is a lynch mob. What we're not doing tonight, can I have some water please? Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have some water? My, my only job tonight is to go through the process that we're here to go through. If anyone doesn't want to go through that process, you're welcome to make an adult decision and you don't have to engage. That's what we're here to do. So, that's, that's what we're here to discuss. Great courtesy, you are out of touch with Mr. and Mrs. Joe Public. Oh my God. This room is out of touch with Joe Public. And we have come here tonight Unbelievable. with respect to the ladies to listen to some, some fluting bullshit about phase two. Oh, sorry. We, want to know, we want to know how or why phase one's been posted onto us. You are working on the assumption, you're also bloody clever, we're going to have it pushed onto us whether we want it or not. You heard the purpose of tonight is they don't have detailed options. So what we're proposing tonight is emerging ideas of how it might start to look. So it's not, there's no detail. I, I think the best way to do this is to start with the presentation to allow the officers to start to go through the process. And then once that's concluded, if people still feel strongly about them, we can take it from there. But for the sake of the people that come along, to have a look at what phase two might look like, I think we have to proceed with the process. Okay? I think we should proceed with the process. Yes. Dave, 
I'm afraid we, we're not going to get very far tonight. I'm afraid we're going to get very far tonight. Why did we not have anything like this for phase one? All I can say is that like it's like a school children. It's like being in a bunch. I can't, I can't repeat this much more. We don't want to get this for phase two. No, then leave. Don't want to hear leave. Mm. That's road works. I think these are the sorts of issues we can, we can ask you the questions. I think it's a fair question. It's a fair question. What was the question? What, what, what I'm going to suggest we do is we start with a presentation and we take it from there. I understand there's a lot of, there's a lot of feeling about phase one. I understand a lot of the history about this. For the sake of those Excuse who me, one suggestion, please. Hold on, happen, two seconds. We, don't, we can't process. hear the questions. Repeat the questions so everyone knows what we're talking about. We can't hear the questions from here. You should repeat it and let me all know what's happening, please. The questions haven't been asked yet because we haven't asked the questions three bloody minutes ago. This is embarrassing. Observably, people here tonight to discuss phase two. No! Yes! Yes! Phase one. How many people here live in Mogai Road? Yep. With phase one. Not that many. You try living with it. Yep. Yeah. Just Mogai Road. Yeah. You can't park your car. <laughs> <laughs> Go by bike and you don't need to see shit. Sorry, I'm don't just leave. Don't even live in the area. I'm a cyclone every day. And please don't hit me. Get out of the way. 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 Get out of some of people in this, this is this is pointless. Utterly pointless. The whole thing is a nightmare, and I have lived with this nightmare for a year now, as have others in Mogai Road. These people here have just told you we don't want phase one, let alone that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Please hear me out. Okay. Can I ask you, do you want children? With having the ability to cycle along that road. No! 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 No, you don't. You don't. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, this is... Where do you live? So, you answer. Where do you live? I live in Torps. I cycle along here. Oh, okay. 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 Right. At the risk of sending it to what we're going to do, we are going to go ahead. This is horrible. Is the Unbelievable. I know. Trust me, if I live in... There was a mix of views in the audience. The the point. point. Come here specifically to listen to the presentation. So, what I would ask is if we can have some patience for at least 30 minutes and give the council officers at least 30 minutes of peace and quiet to go through the presentation. At that point, I will come back in and we'll have some questions from there. Okay. We're not going to have any more shouting from the audience tonight. Okay. This, okay. So, we're going to, what we're going to do. We do not listen. What we're going to do is proceed with the presentation now. I'm going to hand the mic over to the panel who are going to introduce themselves. And then from that point, we'll come back and start with the presentation. Well done, thank you. Well done! Stand up here! Good, good evening, my name is John Wander and I'm here from Sustrans, which is a uh, government, well, we are, work with government to help to fund schemes that allow people to walk and cycle more easily. Where do you get your money from? Where does your money come from? Good evening, thank you for coming and as we 
information from the Daily Front and from Roads and Transport. That's the department I work from, Strategic Roads for Roads and Transport. This is, this is, so, so, this is, this is the country. It's a shame to be here, to be, in the, to be living in this. I'm ashamed of living in this area. You make me put your mouth. Who's Okay. So tonight I'm going to start with an introduction and that introduction kind of sets the scene back to where we were in 2011 when we actually started the process for Fair Trade 1. At that point um, we were looking at the, at the national, the regional and the local transport policies which look to align with Scottish government objectives which look to have fairer society, healthier society, um, safer, cleaner, smarter. And all of those objectives we're looking to deliver with the cycling. We're looking to um, improve health, reduce obesity. There's a obesity crisis at the moment. There's a health bomb, time bomb at the moment. Looking at safety for all the children. We're looking at better air quality. Bearthead Cross is an air quality area with, um, that is above the threshold of uh, tolerance. So we're looking to, um, in the surrounding area, how we can reduce that level. We've also signed up to climate change. Part of climate change is the fact that we need to get people out of private cars, looking at using walking, cycling and public transport. Um, also, it has been seen that to get through sense of place and improve eco economic development for areas as well. So to sort of see this, we've looked at reducing inequality, leisure and tourism growth and reducing road congestion. Is what we've done so far. So what is the fair thing? When we started consultation in 2011, we'd been awarded funding from Strathclyde Passenger Transport. And at that point, it was to look at the route corridor as a whole. It was to look at the fact that there's a lot of development and there's high car ownership in the area. There's not the opportunity to find more traffic lanes on the 81. There, it's a built-up area. There's houses, there's driveways, there's businesses along the route. So we have to look at getting people out of their vehicles and looking at using different forms of transport. If you can see that the Bearsway is a safe cycleway, it provides a protected and safe area away from traffic. Um, and Bearsway runs from Burnbury roundabout to Hillfoot at the moment. It's in the region of a mile long. Um, it has been designed by our colleagues within Cycling Scotland and TPE, and it was externally funded by our partners. Strathclyde like Passenger Transport and such trans. Excuse me. We were recognised by the Scottish not, Transport I Board just recently take back. Back, and for please. achievements in cycling. It's not Strathclyde Passenger Transport, it's the Strathclyde Partnership mm. for and Transport. We're going to take questions at the end. Thank not you very much. It's not a question, it's telling so you you're wrong. Why is phase one segregated? The actually phase one is a mix of segregation and shared space. The reason that um, there is a small element of shared space I'll go into with a further um, description further on. So as I said earlier, engagement began in 2011. At that time we went and we had a number of events and uh, the question we asked people was how could we encourage you to not take every journey by car? How can we encourage you to do a journey that's maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes or onward, but not take your car? And what the clear answer was at that time was, I need high quality infrastructure that makes me feel safe. <laughs> when we looked, the reason that it, is a, it became a segregated lane, and it's a two-way segregated lane, which at the time, People were very keen to see it on both sides. However, if it had been on both sides of the road, we would have lost all our parking for residents. We would have lost um, the opportunity to have other points to access for driveways and 
number of junctions would be much greater. So there'd be a lot of more um, complex zones. So as I said before, um, there, it is actually a combination of segregation and shared space. And this is through engagement that we had with local residents. Because we were deployed. There's an, a number of properties opposite the Allender Junction. And there, with, with the segregated route, we would have lost all those spaces for those residents. So yeah, through engagement and court. through meeting with the residents who live along there, we actually met with the Scottish Government and we talked about what we could do there. And we actually put an application for shared space at that junction, which is why it is segregated, but it's segregated with a line. Ra of, of paint rather than being in the carriageway, but it allowed all the residents to retain their parking. So we did work closely with them, and as if we were given approval to proceed, we would continue that in closely. The bus stop designs were also changed, and that was through work with um, residents. It was also through work with struck by passenger transport and first bus. The, a number of people have commented that they don't think it's safe. The scheme went through three stages of road safety audits, right from feasibility to design to post construction. And any recommendations made, we actually actioned. That was maybe um, more signage, maybe different lining, but we did action at the time. Um, we had no objections or issues raised by emergency services. We did a traffic regulation order process because we actually reallocated an area of the carriageway to cycleway. So by doing that, we have to go through a legal process. Through that as well, people have the opportunity to object and we actually had a traffic management appeal board. But at that point, um, we had no <laughs> objections from any statutory consultees, no objections from police, fire, or um, ambulance. And yeah, residents also had the opportunity to object through that process as well. It is, it is a legal process and they had the opportunity to object. There has been no change in accident rates on the road and the police have advised and confirmed that every accident there has been on the road has been through to driver error and it has not been because of the road layout. The police are, have, have confirmed that. Um, we have had a confirmation from the fire brigade that the road layout causes them no issues. We, we, wrote to the fire, we wrote to all the emergency services and the fire responded and said that they had no issue with the road layout a year on. Um, another issue people have said is they don't feel that people are actually using the cycling. Now we have um, continual monitoring, we have 24 hour monitoring on the lane, it counts the number of people using it and it should be remem remembered that this is only partially built, There is this is a small area that doesn't actually go anywhere yet, so it, we, we would anticipate those numbers growing substantially should it extend as we would wish. Um, as you can see that we do manual counts, we have the automatic counters, we're seeing an average, including winter and bad weather, of over a thousand cycle trips per week. Right. 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 But there's right. 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 people that are in their with cars. Facts. That's a thousand cars that aren't on the road. Right. So if you, think, if you think of the fact that in peak time in the summer, we have over 2,000. Look, listen, we are here to hear a presentation. I understand there's a great deal of feeling. The vast majority of people are listening, okay? We just have to make sure that we don't cheer and jeer people who are speaking. They're trying to do the very best to articulate what is quite a complex, quite a complex proposal with lots of different options. So if we could just be patient and don't cheer and shout throughout that, that would be great. Thank you. I could just note that only 8% of people are now cycling on the road. We're actually seeing 92% of all cyclists are now within the lane. Um, the, another, another issue that people have raised is that they feel that there's a big delay behind buses. 
Now, what happened before is that there was no lay-bys, the bus stopped on the carriageway, but people did dangerous overtaking manoeuvres because they had wider So, what we are seeing, we've done counts and we've found that um, the average queue length is four cars on southbound and one pound cars going northbound. That's what I see. The bus priority has been retained, and this is in keeping with Scottish Government hierarchy in the fact that um, people come first, pedestrian cyclists, then users of public transport, followed by the private car. And as I stated, there is less opportunity because vehicles do not cross the centre line now to overtake. Um, to finish off sort of the phase one element at the moment is the fact that what is the motion that was raised, sorry I don't know why this is doing this, there was um, a motion raised um, to council and this is part of that, the meaningful consultation for phase two. This will be presented to council in September. Along with that will be a port that looks at the issues arising from phase one, be, be considered by elected members. There um, have been information leaflets issued to all residents within Mogai and Bears Den. It had details on the project, but also details of these events to encourage people to attend. We were requested to hold conven conventional public meetings, of which this is our first one. We have a second one next week. And as requested, we have sent out a further letter to statutory consultees that was asking for feedback and whether they have found that the road does cause issues if there are on an emergency, say police, um, ambulance or fire. And as said earlier, we received a response from the fire brigade who said that it did cause them no issues and also a letter of support from Go Bike. Oh, okay. like, um, yes, we did. We wrote twice to the ambulances. They didn't object during the traffic regulation order process and they have not responded through the other process either. Well, we, have, we wrote to them twice to ask them if they had any issues and they did not respond. We are trying to get a response from them. So I'm going to work with my colleague David here um, working through phase two. Phase two runs from Hillfoot to Kissington. We've split it into three areas which allows us to look at each area in detail. We're looking at existing issues and considerations for each section in the first instance and then we will look at the options that are being evaluated. And I would like to say now before people get upset looking at the issues, is that one of the options we're looking at is to do nothing. So, but, but I would just like to say that is because that we feel that everyone has a voice and it's important for everyone to back into that. The do nothing is also used as our baseline for our traffic model. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Uh, so, as Gail said, um, they still go from Hillfoot to Kensington, and from engagement to date, we've seen quite a lot of issues identified. Um, so the first section runs from Hillfoot to Birchview, um, and some of the issues that people have raised so far is commuter parking uh, for residents and businesses, so cars park all down the side of the road, uh, taking space that could be used by customers, or uh, they cause obstruction to visibility for vehicles exiting from the dry or exiting Bridgeview. You've also got inconsiderate parking uh, on Bridgeview that causes people not to be able to get out of their driveways or, again, safety issues. And th there's currently no right turn facility into Roman Drive. So if there's a car, if you're traveling south and there's a car, 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 line of cars parked on the side of the road and someone's turning, trying to turn right into Roman Drive, the queue backs up towards Hillfoot shops. Double yellow line is so fast. So the other thing is the lack of customer parking for businesses that's been raised uh, through our business forums. Uh, so the northern Hillfoot shops have a two-hour restriction for I think it's 10, 11 spaces. But again, that still isn't enough. And the southern shops don't have any restrictions. So they suffer from commuter parking where customers can't access their businesses because there's cars parked all there, up there all day, which they're legally they're allowed to do, but it's not providing any benefits to residents or businesses. 
uh, or local people. And at the moment, trying to cycle through this area with cars parked on both sides isn't the most pleasant experience. And for people who are trying to uh, try to cycle, that will deter them from doing so. Some of the considerations for phase two um, is the hill foot entrance. So how that would work for pedestrians leaving at peak times, how, they'd into, how a cycleway would integrate with that. Um, and the other thing is a 20 mile per hour zone, how that would work through this section. So if you're passing through the businesses, the two business areas and the train station where there's a lot of pedestrians and people accessing the shops, how a 20 mile per hour zone would work through there. So that's section one. Section two runs from Bridgeview, so Bucare Junction as the junction. And um, that's the main two areas. Uh, so some of the issues with this are yeah. Some of the issues with this are if you're coming south on Mulgar Road at Bocair Junction, that footway there is prone to a lot of damage from larger vehicles trying to turn around because it's quite an acute angle. So the signal has been pushed to the rear of the footway. So even trying to cross there can be a bit confusing and you have to kind of stand back to the rear of the footway to try and get across. Uh, the other thing is there's two northbound lanes on Mulgar Road going north into the junction. Um, one of them is a right turn lane and straight ahead. So if someone's turning right, everyone from behind gets stuck behind them and then they have to try and merge into the other lane. So you've got a kind of a conflict there. And you've also got two northbound lanes that go into one immediately after the junction. So you have pe people competing for space. So that's another issue that people brought up. Um, access into ASDA was one of them. Uh, if you're getting off the bus and you're trying to access ASDA, you have to go up steps or you have to walk all the way around. <laughs> um, the other thing is there's three northbound lanes in ASDA. Uh, and they're all substandard, so they're all too narrow. Uh, they're two and a half meters each, and I think the right turn lane is 2.9. So uh, that causes issues. You get people getting a weaker script, and lots of the feedback we've got so far. And there's not a right turn filter in Asda, so you do get a queue back, and you can only turn right once you get a break in the traffic. Um, and then trying to cycle through here again is a pretty tricky for a confident cyclist. Cycling through these junctions is pretty pretty scary and it will deter a lot of people from cycling trying to negotiate these junctions. Um, some of the considerations are the bus stop solutions through here, so how, how, you'd, how you'd work around the bus stops, the best solution for that. Is it a case of working with ASDA to try and utilise some of their land to incorporate a cycleway or avoid the footpath or make uh, improve access into their, into their business? Um, and then section three it goes from Buchanan Drive to Kensington Hall. Um, so one of the issues is the two bus stops, um, on, one is on Mulgar Road and one is on McFarland. So one of the buses coming south goes left into McFarland Road. So if you have amalgamated them bus stops onto Mulgar Road, would that be an improvement? <laughs> um, so we're looking at things like that. Again, you've got a, two northbound lanes, one is a right turn lane. So if someone's turning right, you do essentially just get one flow of northbound traffic towards Asda. And so, standard, and every road in the so that could be improved to this project <laughs> if you have just a right turn lane with a filter and then a straight ahead lane. So right turners will get their own signal phase and they can just go, but we'll come into more detail about that. Um, so phase two, we've looked at a number of options. Um, so from the engagement back in November and October, uh, we were asked to look at a few different options of type of cycleways, shared use, segregated. Um, Painted cycleways, what the effect of that. So these have been evaluated against national national cycle design objectives and also the Bears Way design objectives. Um, the things we're kind of thinking about is the impact for all road users with phase two. Um, if it removes if it removes residential parking, if it removes it's too much too many lanes, or if it has an effect on journey time. So we've carried out uh, traffic model, preliminary traffic modeling, to see the effect that this was having. We'll get into a bit more detail about that. Um, so, option one. This was to look at the shared use on both sides. So effectively, it's the curves on both sides of the footway are built out. So you have two shared use paths, basically. Uh, they have to be a minimum of four meters. So that requires a lot of space. And um, on the pro side, correct? Uh, on the pro side, uh, you get people can cycle, they're separated from traffic, so that's an improvement. Um, and you get the east side will connect to phase one, so you have that, you don't have to cross over the road if you're cycling north or south. Um, some of the cons with this are more confident cyclists will probably stay on the road. Um, there'll be an increased conflict between pedestrians and cyclists. So. You can imagine you see in that picture there, if someone's with a buggy or someone's trying to walk down the road and a cyclist comes up from behind, 
obviously there's going to be a certain amount of conflict that and how to separate that is the kind of up for discussion. That's option one. Option two is a shared use cycleway or a shared use path on the east side. So that would just connect to phase one. Um, the pros of this, it separates uh, cyclists from motorized vehicles. It connects to phase one um, and it removes commuter parking from over the brow of the hill at Hillfoot. Some of the cons for this, again, more confident cyclists will probably stay on the road. Uh, you'll have conflict between pedestrians and uh, cyclists. And you could get confusion once shared use paths come into play. You can get confusion about which paths you can actually cycle on. So if you introduce a shared use path here, people might say, why can't I just cycle over there? And that can cause confusion for people, um, which again can lead to conflict. This effectively has the same impact on the carriageway as a segregated option. So that would be option four. But we'll move on to option three. Uh, option three would be the same as the other ones, it's just on the west side. So it's on the opposite side. Uh, so that has its, again, you can separate it from vehicles, but Again, most confident cyclists won't use it. You'll have to cross the phase two, you've got driveways to deal with, you've got like, a lot of conflicts in there. So that doesn't really fulfill any objectives, but it does take a bit of road space. So. Uh, option four is the two-way segregated cycleway. So that will be a continuation of phase one. Some of the pros to this, it separates cyclists, it's suitable for more types of cyclists. Um, it's more functional for experienced cyclists. It addresses some of the existing issues that I've gone through in section one, two, and three. So right turn lanes, stuff like that. It addresses some of that. Um, it removes on-street parking from commuters. Um, however, a segregated option at some points might cause more delays for cyclists using it. So it's about how to balance that with the junction treatments and how you get through the signals. Because if it doesn't work for cyclists, there's no real point doing it in the first place. It has to work for all road users. So finding a balance between everyone is kind of what we're trying to do with phase two. Um, option five is the same as option four, but it's on the other side of the road. So it's on the west side of the road. So again, you'd be separated, but you'd be on the opposite side of the road. So you'd have to try and connect into phase one. So you'd be on the west, cycle up, and then try and connect into the east. So it's not very functional as a journey, and it has pretty much the same impact as one on the east side, which have got slightly more conflicts on the west side through driveways. Uh, option six is the width flow segregated cycle lane. So this is something we looked at for phase one, doing just a segregated lane on each side, but this has more of an impact on everything. Really. It removes parking, it takes the most space, and it might be more functional but it'll have a kind of critical effect on journey times for all road users. So that's, that's what that does, really. So through our appraisal process, we've gone through all of these and looking at the most deliverable options and address the existing issues and meet the objectives are option two to four and then a combination of the two extensions. So that would be shared use on the east side and a segregated on the east side or a combination of the two. Right. I'm going to just talk you through what those options are. To make it clear that this is part of the evaluation process this event today. The reason that we're looking at these options in more detail with you today is to look at the ones that actually fulfill the Bearsley objectives, which is to provide that protected space. And the options two, four, and seven, out of all the other options, are the only ones that do that. But um, this is all, all part of that consultation process. So the pictures here on the screen show option two going through Hill Foot. As you can see, it is a wider footway on the opposite side from the shops, which means that there will be some vehicle spaces relocated. We'll be looking at where do those space cars then go. There's a number of cars in that area that will park all day. We carried out a parking survey and we saw that the cars at that side of the carriageway do park over six hours. We've got the opportunity to look, do a parking strategy which will look, because we're very clear that we don't want to move those vehicles and cause a problem elsewhere. So what we're looking at is where will those vehicles go? And as we've noticed, they would go to the surrounding streets. 
Now, we don't want to cause inconvenience to local residents. So what we'd be looking at is what is the correct proposal for those streets. And we have a number of options we can look at, be it controlled parking zones, be it that you can't park at certain times, be it resident parking areas. And those we would look at through a parking strategy that, which would look at that area, but also the wider area within a five minute walk or so. So um, where we see the time restricted customer parking in front of the shops at the moment, as Dave said, there's an area further down at the other stretch of shops that don't have a parking restriction at the moment. So we would be looking at allocating some space for that to help support the local businesses. And they have raised over a number of years that that's an issue for them. So we would want to work with them to look at that. Now, if you look at the picture below, it, it's very similar, it, in, except that it is a segregated cycle lane in the fact that there is a curb at the edge of the footway and then another curb to build out at the edge of the carriageway. So there is, it reduces that conflict between pedestrians and cyclists and it reduces that conflict between cyclists and vehicles. Um, and as Dave said, with option two, there is the risk of conflict if you have two-way cyclists and pedestrians sharing the one area. Now, if I go on to the lower area, we'll be taking questions at the end. Um, if, no, but we at the end we'll be able to bring back... Right, thank you. Um, at the end, I can, when we do questions, I'll be able to put up whatever slide that you wish to talk through, and that gives all people the opportunity to all feed in at that time. Um, again, when we look at the lower area of the hill foot, we would be looking again at a parking strategy. There's a lot large number of commuters. There's residents in that area that can't park by their property. We'd be looking at, could we look at permit system for them? We'd be looking at um, time restrictions in front of the vehicle, in uh, front of the shops. So what we're looking at is we're looking at for all road users and all residents and the business users in that area as much as we possibly can. And in the picture below, again, you can see, again, segregated footway, segregated from cyclists, segregated from the running carriageway. Now moving forward, in, the, in front of you, you can see Buclair Road. Now the moment um, that junction has a very narrow footway, and it's a very tight footway, and the curb line is all broken because larger vehicles go over the curb. There's also the traffic lights being pushed to the back because vehicles have nudged it. So we would be looking at widening that junction to make it a more comfortable place to be for pedestrians and for other road users such as cyclists. Now at the top option, again, that's the shared juice. You can see it's the wider footway. You can see how that looks that we've retained the two lanes going south and we have the one lane going north as is the current position. In the option below, again, retain the same number of lanes, but again, curb at the edge of the footway, curbed area for cyclists. Now, this is ASDA. ASDA at the moment does have um, a guardrail area, so that if you were cycling and you would have a guardrail at one side of you and perhaps a large vehicle, or even a smaller vehicle driving at some speed to the other side of you. So what we are looking at, you have here, um, either sheer juice, so again the wider footway, and um, retaining the lane going south at this point, and two lanes going south, and but reducing the lanes going north to two. This means that you have full width footways rather than the three substandard. You reduce that conflict where vehicles now, if you've got vehicles turning right that can't turn because there's no filter lane at the moment, that then has that stagger back effect where they overlap lanes. So what we would be looking at here is to implement a right turn filter so the vehicles can actually cross and get into ASDA under their own green light. It would mean that vehicles would not be congested there, so there would be through movement 
and um, in the, we are actually seeing through modelling that that would actually make the junction work a lot better. So again, if you look below segregated, again, the curb space doesn't take up more space and there's still the four lanes, two lanes going south, two lanes going north. So uh, the preliminary, preliminary modelling uh, shows, so we've done a number of options uh, to see what would work best for our cyclists and drivers and pedestrians. Because at the moment, uh, according to what we found out and uh, through our engagement, as the junction and Buclair junction don't really work that well at the moment. So as Gail said, you've got that right turn, you get clogged back because there's a right turn and there's no filter light. Um, so the modelling shows, if you, I say a Buclair junction, it's a top image there. If you ban all the right turns, bar the right turn that goes from Mulcahy to Beauclair. Yeah, so you'd still have the right turn that goes from Mulcahy Road to Beauclair Road, and then all the other right turns would be banned. And the below image is West, West Chapelton as the junction. So if you ban the right turn to West Chapelton Avenue, or West, yeah, West Chapelton Avenue, um, that can be an improvement. So, so we're looking at these options. These still have to go through any detailed design process for for the modelling. But if you do this, the the Roman Road band right turn is less critical to this whole thing. But if you ban the other right turns, that could have the overall journey time. So the next slide shows. I don't know how clear that is, but there's two lines on that. One is existing, and one is what the option is. Um, and as, as you'll see, they're pretty close together. And in modelling terms, that means there's no significant change in journey times from point A to point B. Um, in some locations, you might have a slight more delay, so you might have a 10 seconds delay, sometimes it has there, or a 5 second delay of book there. But on the whole journey point, if you're going north to south or south to north, it'll be more or less the same journey time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's still more work to do on this. Um, once a preferred option is identified, uh, more modeling will have to take place, and the finer details of that will have to be right now. But this <coughs> one, introducing uh, a segregated facility or a shared use facility would not have a huge, significant impact on journey times or critically affect them. Um, Interesting. Thank you. That come, really is us coming to the end of the formal presentation where we'll open the floor to questions. But just wanted to run through what the next steps would be. We are remitted to prepare a report on the outcome of the consultation and that will be prepared by the recommendation and that will go to Council for consideration. Should Council approve, um, the, then at that point, there would be detailed design carried out, but alongside that there would be further consultation. And we would, at that point, be looking at teasing out the details, which would be visiting residents, visiting community councils, looking at meeting with other groups, so that we can tease out what those details, design elements are. Now we're going to move to questions. It's going to be facilitated by David, but we will be able to take a note of all your questions and responses so that we have a record. Well, first of all, thank you to Gail and Dave for doing presentation. I think there's, I wasn't kidding at the beginning when I said there was a lot of options to go through. Um, as promised, what I'd like to do is just pause for a second. Does, does anyone...